Okay, I'll call the meeting. Yep. I will call the meeting in or to order. And uh, we have uh, John. Uh, John, why don't you fill in for Tom? All right. Okay. Are there any additions or changes uh, in the order of the agenda? I notice we uh, added the um, uh, minutes for the site walk that we had. That was already well, on the agenda in too, right? The minutes just didn't exist when I first sent out the packet, but it was yep. already on the agenda. Okay. No other, um, no other additions or changes. Okay, very good. Um, any communication or correspondence? No. Okay. Uh, what about audience of citizens? Anybody joining us tonight? I guess not. Okay. So let's get under. Uh, the old business uh, item 6.1, IWWC 2122-28, the application of Mark Walter, Columbia Town Administrator, to replace bridge number 04446, Hop River Road over the Hop River. <laughs> Isabel, you want to give us a brief... Uh, Sure, absolutely. Summary of what we did on a, a site walk, maybe. <laughs> so we had our site walk for this property on uh, this last Saturday, the 30th. Um, I'm sorry, I'm collecting myself. <laughs> um, not a lot of new information was presented. Uh, the project is a joint effort between the towns of Coventry and Columbia. Um, there was a public hearing for Coventry on the 27th um, of this past month. And at that meeting, they did approve the application uh, for the bridge. Um, the bridge itself is going to fully replace the existing bridge over Hop River. It'll be um, two lanes in approximately the same location, just uh, a little bit larger, and they're adjusting the curve towards the bridge on the Columbia side. Um, I think that the application is very thorough. Um, mm -hmm. It's a part of the federal local bridge program, which um, I think that the CJM representatives can talk about a little bit more. Um, and they've, they've given a lot of consideration, I think, to the environmental impacts and the impact on the historical property in the area. Um, I know that uh, the project itself was reviewed uh, in addition to being reviewed by DEEP and um, the Army Corps of Engineers um, environmental uh, section. It was also reviewed by the Connecticut um, Historic preservation um, department as well for any uh, impact there. And um, I think Dan uh, Carneen, the CJM uh, project manager can, can speak to those things a little bit more. Um, and I think they have some additional information um, that they've gathered since the last meeting uh, that they'd like to share with the commission as well. Very good. Oh, yep, okay, so um, thanks Isabel. Uh, I'm Dan Penn for CJM. I'll uh, start sharing my screen. Um, okay. There we go. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, um, I don't. <laughs> I guess Isabel covered a lot of the, the new material that was presented at the site walk this past Saturday. Um, Let's go a little bit more deeper on, on kind of the, how the project is set up. Um, this is a federal local bridge program project um, that was initiated by the towns of Coventry and Columbia. Um, however, the, the DOT is administering design for this and um, is in charge of, of design work and overseeing that. And that's kind of why Close Jensen Miller is here presenting on behalf of DOT and, and the towns. Um, 
once this project goes to construction and the construction phase, um, this will be a completely town administered project by the towns of Coventry and Columbia. Um, the project itself and the day-to-day -day operations will be overseen by a construction inspector that has been chosen by both towns as well. Um, again, the, the bridge is located on the, the town line. Um, a aerial view of the site, again, this is a good view of showing where the, the bridge is in relation to the Hop River Trail parking area. Um, and then you also see to the south on the Columbia side, the, the Hop River Dam Mill Race. Again, the existing bridge is a substandard width um, and, and has a substandard horizontal curve. Hydraulically, the bridge does have, you know, um, have a 74.2 square mile drainage area. Um, one of the things discussed at the site was um, flooding in the area. Um, because of that drainage area, the site does see occasional flooding um, and it's not um, hydraulically adequate for, for all design storm events. Some photos of the site, site of the mill race, uh, the existing twin cell culvert. Um, something also we wanted to expand upon is that there are structural conditions with this bridge that, that are also in need of repair. Um, these slides kind of show the, the overall condition, and especially in the top right, um, you see the, the rusted steel bearings. Um, so, so with those, um, those, those needed structural repairs and along with the, the existing roadway configuration, we will be performing the, um, the full bridge replacement. Um, again, this is, so we are going one lane to two lane, which is shown by the top picture here. Um, and then on the bottom picture, you can, this has a nice view of um, the proposed structure in orange being built over and behind the existing substructure, which is shown here in gray. Um, so the, the proposed bridge abutments will be built behind the existing bridge abutments and, and those existing abutments and pier will be left in place with the top portions removed. So by, by maintaining those, um, those portions, we will be maintaining the existing watercourse conditions and, and daily flows. This is just a close-up of, of that abutment on the Columbia side, along with the, the new mill race that will be installed, um, the new mill race culvert that will be installed. Um, the new culvert consists of a single cell eight by six concrete box culvert. Um, that culvert bottom will be treated with natural stream bed material, um, which will be an, an improvement over the, the existing twin cell corrugated metal pipe culvert. Again, we, we talked, discussed about um, environmental impacts because of this. Um, this, this. This slide here shows, shows all the impacts, um, but, but moving on to each area as a separate um, item, the temporary watercourse impacts for this site um, consists of 2,880 square feet of impacts. And, and this is mostly due to the, the water handling for the product and, and dewatering of the work zones. Um, so, so this, these impacts were measured from the town line to the ordinary high water line at the main channel and between the ordinary high water lines and the mill raceway. Um, so the, the impacts are caused again, like by the installation of the, the temperate water handling devices and the dewatering of the work zones. Um, it's worth mentioning that, that most of this area will not see active construction work, um, especially in the mill race. So, so on the, kind of in the middle or towards the left of the, the project, that, that whole area um, where it's light blue, um, it's just gonna be dewatered. Uh, there won't be active construction work in those, those areas. All the permanent impacts related to the water course for this project are related to the removal of the existing twin cell culvert and installation of the new single cell culvert, along with some embankment grading that, that'll extend into the, the raceway due to that, that shifting of the roadway and the, and the horizontal curve. Um, here are the wetland impacts for the project. Um, the Columbia wetlands of special concern. Now these are 8,045 square feet of impacts inclusive of the 
the 60 square feet of state and federal wetlands impacts. Um, again, the, this is mostly caused by the installation of the, the proposed south abutment along with the, the approach roadway construction. Um, erosion and site control will be installed to, along this, all, all this work here. Um, and the erosion and site control systems will be installed um, in adherence to the Connecticut erosion and sediment guidelines. Um, any disturbed area seat in, within this area uh, will be treated with either a uh, wetland grass establishment mix, uh, conservation seeding for slope mix, or the standard turf mix. So in summary, we have 2,880 square feet of temporary water course impacts, 870 square feet of permanent impacts, um, 8,045 square feet of Columbia wetlands and special concern impacts, which includes the 60 square feet of impacts to the surveyed state and wet federal wetlands. Uh, provisions um, will be included from deep fisheries um, in coordination with that, that office is ongoing. Uh, this site is also being um, reviewed by deep national diversity database to make sure we don't affect any of the listed species um, that could potentially be on the site. Um, a final determination is pending. Um, a, a plant survey, which will be taking place over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I think it, Isabel already kind of hit on other permits anticipated for this site um, and this project. Um, and then we did want to talk a little, little bit more about the historical considerations for this project. Uh, we know it's um, a point of concern for, for a lot of um, you know, committee members and, and residents and, and residents that even <laughs> came up to us um, on the site. Um, so we just wanted to, to reiterate that this project was screened by um, the Connecticut DOT Office of Environmental Planning, along with the, the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, the project is located within the, the Hop River Historic District, which is an eligible, which is eligible for historic listing on the National Register. Um, however, the bridge itself is, is not a historic bridge and, and is not eligible for listing and, and work associated with this project and the scope of work for the bridge will have no adverse impact on that. And then, but we still want to consider the historic aspect of the bridge and the project. So we try to maintain as much of the existing structures we could, you know, maintaining the existing abutments, um, bottom portions of the existing abutments and pier along with minimizing impacts to that channel wall along the Hop River. And then any um, exposed concrete will be treated with ash or stone masonry to kind of match um, the existing stone aesthetic out there on the site today. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess at this time, we're, you know, uh, myself, uh, Greg Barris from our office and, and uh, Eric Buckley, our water resources manager from our office, are, we're all here to answer any, any additional questions that the, the commission has. Dan, this is Ian Dan. Um, I had a question regarding, I know in the beginning you mentioned that the towns would be administering the construction of this and mm -hmm. have they selected who would actually be administering this or? Yes, so, um, so currently the interviews for this um, construction inspection have been uh, performed and, and the consultant selected was GM2 Associates um, out of uh, Glastonbury. Uh, All right. Thank you. I was just curious how, what, in what stage that process was, but. Yep. And then right now um, the, the towns are, are working on towards uh, entering into an agreement with, with GM2. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and both, both towns have, a, are in, in going to be in that agreement on Saturday. We weren't sure about Columbia, but Columbia is going to be part of that agreement for the inspector. Yeah. As far, um, yes, Columbia will be involved with the process. Columbia did have members on, on the board um, and in the interview panel when, when selecting. Right. Um, but okay, yeah, as far as, as far as agreements, I'm not sure whose name it will be on <laughs> or who will be <laughs> signing it officially. Um, I've got I've got a quick question. Um, have Have you guys taken a look at the dam itself? 
to see uh, if there's any problems with the dam. Um, so we did look into see, to see if we had any impacts from our project on the dam. Um, we did do some preliminary coordination and reached out to, um, we did, uh, I think it was, I think it was deep to see if we would, if our project would impact the dam at all. Um, we came back, there's no impact. So um, any work on the dam would, would kind of be out of the, the scope of work for, for our project. So right. um, we, we didn't look too much into any sort of improvements or anything for the dam. Okay, thank you. And one other question is just out of curiosity, you mentioned that hydraulically the, the flows under the dam were not, or the existing dam are failing. What um, storms were they actually failing under? Um, right, so the, the bridge. Um, and like I said, I don't think it, I'm assuming that the new design accounts for all that. Um, and it's just more of a curiosity. Yeah, so I'll just bring up the elevation view to kind of speak, speak to this. Um, so right now the the flows and and for the bridge um, during a 50 year storm event I think create a pressure flow condition, um, and then we do see overtopping on the roadway approach. Um, I think at the hundred year, Eric or Greg, do you, do you guys um, can you guys confirm that? Yeah, hi, um, Eric Buckley from Close Jensen and Miller. I can jump in here. <clears throat> the existing condition at the bridge does see pressure flow for the 50 year event. Um, the new configuration of the proposed replacement actually alleviates that pressure flow. However, the, the 50 year still rises right to the edge of the road, um, but, the, but the overtopping of the 50 year is reduced by about four tenths of a foot. Perfect, thank you. Hey, any other questions? So will the elevation of the bridge be higher than like you're saying? four tenths of a foot or I, I didn't completely understand that. So, so the, again, Eric, Eric Buckley, um, <clears throat> the, the, the larger opening beneath the, the structure, the effective area yeah. uh, allow, allows for reducing the 50 year um, overtopping elevation. Yep. Um, and then the, the configuration that there, there is a slight and, and Dan would be better at talking about the profile adjustments than I, but um, there's a slight improvement to the profile on the south side, on the Columbia side, I believe, which helps to alleviate the pressure flow at the 50 year event. And when you're saying pressure flow, it's actually the water coming right up to the bottom of the bridge? Yes, so yeah, pressure flow would be when the water hits the, the low cord or the, or the girders of the existing bridge. Gotcha, yeah, I've actually been down there and I've seen that. So uh, the new uh, construction will actually raise the bridge a little bit? Yeah, slightly, slightly. And, now, and I, I was down there in um, September taking pictures of the flooding that we had. And yeah, you saw the water hit those beams and it was pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be great. That'd be improvement, you know. So, yeah, just curiosity. Okay. Uh, any other questions? If not, uh, Isabel, would, do you have a summary ruling on that? I do. Okay. Uh, one second, and I can pull that up. And would you please read it for us when you get it? Share my screen. All right, can everyone see that? Yep. This is for application 2122-28 of Mark Walter for the replacement of the bridge over Hop River and the adjustment of the curve of Hop River Road on the Columbia side of the bridge. Um, let's skip the standard conditions here. Those haven't changed. Um, a pre-construction meeting will be held with the wetlands agent, applicant, and any other subcontractors prior to the start of activities to review construction sequencing. The wetlands agent will be notified of any changes to the construction sequencing. <clears throat> Additional sediment and erosion control measures will be installed during the construction period if necessary or required. Consulting engineers, uh, will perform inspections at least once weekly and after rain events of one inch or greater. 
wetlands agent will coordinate with the consulting engineer inspector and will perform weekly inspections. Mark Walter, the town of Columbia, um, is assigned the responsibility for implementing the sediment and erosion control plan. The responsibility includes the installation and maintenance of control measures, informing all parties engaged on the construction site of the requirements and objectives of the plan, notifying the Inland Wetlands Commission office of any transfer of this responsibility and conveying a copy of the erosion and sediment control plan if the title to the land is transferred. Um, this is, as I have it, a five-year permit. Um, work isn't scheduled to take that long. <laughs> Hopefully the full five years won't be necessary, but um, that can be shortened if the, the commission would like. Okay, very good. So uh, does that anyone want to make a motion to approve the summary ruling that uh, Isabel just read? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, very good. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? So moved. Thank you very much. We're all set. Great. Thank you guys very much. Thank Thanks, you. Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, nice job. Thank you. Did you guys need us for anything else? No, I think you guys should be all set. Thank you. And I will, um, I'll send this, a copy of this uh, permit to you as well. Thank you very much, Isabel and commission. Okay. Uh, that's item number seven under new business is uh, IWWC 2122-32, the application of uh, Jason Nowadzid for the establishment of a nine hole disc golf course, bridge work and some gravel path work of existing trails at the recreation park at 60 Hennequin Road. Uh, Isabel, can you fill us in on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a, another town project. Uh, Jason, the applicant, is our building official. Um, and there's currently a walking trail that goes uh, behind Rec Park, behind like the playground area, oh. um, and kind of along uh, the Joshua's Trust property. Um, it's a loop. And they'd like to augment part of that, which is in a wetland um, so that it's more traversable. Um, currently the plan, and Jason isn't here to speak to this right now, but um, I think a site walk would be beneficial to schedule. But currently the plan is to have sections of it, um, which are geotextile fabric, I believe, and gravel and sections of it which in the wetter areas are wood bridges um, that'll allow water to flow through a little bit more easily and also provide some kind of passage for um, any wildlife in the area. Um, so that is what we're working on right now. Um, they're also planning to put a disc golf course in the general area, it's nine holes. Um, and that in itself is very minimal work. Um, I don't remember the size of the pad off the top of my head, but they're doing, I believe, a small concrete pad with um, disc golf, if anyone uh, isn't familiar with it, is essentially golf with Frisbees. <laughs> oh. um, so the holes are just baskets of chains, and they're putting those uh, with a small concrete pad um, that you throw the Frisbee to. Um, <laughs> And that's it. Everything else will just be foot traffic in the area along the existing walking trail um, and between the baskets. Um, I'm not sure. I'm looking for the application now on the agenda. I'm sorry, I don't have it um, right out in front of me. But um, I'm not sure that we have a full uh, map for each hole of the disc golf course. 
Um, but those should all be outside of the wetlands. Um, I did have a site walk with the designer of the course um, and we discussed what to stay away from. Uh, so I think the only impact directly to the wetlands is going to be augmenting that existing walking path. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, um, have they, um, I don't know if this is the time for questions yet or if we want to accept yeah. it first. Yeah. yeah. So I get, I, I have two questions. I have two questions. Um, do they have, uh, I noticed in the package, they didn't have any details of like that stone fabric, um, but it would be nice to have that as part of the package so we can, you know, review it accordingly. And okay. then the second one is, um, I noticed I was walking my dog out there this weekend um, and I noticed that they did some clearing. Have they started on this already? Um, they did start the clearing um, and I have talked to them about that. Um, they've started it in the Upland Review area. And originally the plan was that I was just going to do an administrative approval for the uh, disc golf course itself. Um, but when they came to me with the additions or changes to the walking path, um, that's when I felt it was necessary to bring it to the commission. Um, so at this point, I don't think that anything else has been done since that initial clearing. Um, but I, I am in the process of, of having discussions with, with the town on that as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's... I have, I have one question. Mm -hmm. Uh, out in that area, there's an old farmhouse uh, foundation that has been uh, dug up uh, archaeology or investigation and so forth. Is it anywhere near that? Um, yeah, you, that's I, right, Ron. You know about where that is, right? Yeah, I know. I know the house, and I've walked the the area that has been cut. I don't have a map of that, but it's not doesn't extend over that far. Sure. But obviously, we need to have a better plan and do it right for us to know what's going on here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's uh, accept the application. Do I hear a motion to accept the application? Sure. Motion to okay. uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So moved. Very good. So um, it looks like we uh, should have a site walk. Uh, let me see my calendar here. Boy. How about the 16th at nine? Can everybody make it? Wait. Good. I think so. Yeah, it sounds all right. Uh, oh, I got eight. Monday the 16th. Wait, wait a minute. That's a wait, Monday. That's a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I got I got I got the wrong. Okay. You mean the 14th? Uh, 14th, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Looks open. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So let's do that. Uh nine o'clock in the morning over there. Okay. I can walk from my house over there. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And I will um I'll speak to Jason and have him uh, get some more info on the geotextile fabric um, and where they're sourcing the stone for the uh, pathway as well. Yeah, and just I'm just thinking a simple sketch showing what they're thinking. So then that way it's part of the package and it's clear. Right. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think it needs to be a little more detailed. Yeah. Okay, so that takes care of that. Item. Uh, item number eight, uh, the approval of the uh, meeting minutes. Uh, we have a regular meeting minutes of April 4th, 2022. Do I hear a motion to accept those? No, I have, I have one minor change. Okay. Uh, it's very minor, but it's, uh, uh, it's on the page. Oh, I guess, yeah. Uh, the uh, second paragraph that starts with T. Garrett also asked if the project would affect the nearby historic mill. Uh, you got to put the word site in there. 
There's no mill there now. That was long ago. Okay, any other corrections? If not, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes uh, with the we'll move, correction? We'll oh, okay. Uh, second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, then we have the uh, site walk minutes of April 30th, 2022. Do I hear a motion to accept those? Motion to accept. Okay. Second. I'll second. Okay, John. All in favor? Raise your hand. Aye. aye, aye. So okay. Uh, we don't have any audience of citizen. Any open discussion that anybody wants to uh, make? John, I, I have one thing, and it's kind of related to the town's um, application that they just submitted. Yes. I'm kind of a little concerned if the town is starting clearing and doing work on an application before it's gone through the process. I mean, I think the town of of anybody, any applications we should see should be, you know, up front following the process. We should be the leaders of, we don't have an excuse to say we didn't know. Um, and it's a little concerning and it kind of goes to Mary, you know, last week or last time we met that flow chart, you know, potentially doing classes for the, for the, for the member or not for the members, but for the residents so they understand the process. If the town doesn't understand the process, <laughs> it's concerning. <laughs> and, and I don't know if they're just trying to move at lightning pace to show that stuff's being done out there or what, but we shouldn't be doing that, in my opinion. Uh, I, agree um, with you. I agree with you, Ian, but it sounds like they've been in contact with Isabel. You know, sort of um, in between thinking going on. They, they have been in contact with me. I did discuss the location of the disc golf course uh, with the designer and with Mark Walter. Um, I never, I, I discussed doing an administrative approval with them, um, but I did not, I will say I did not get an application um, for that approval. And I, I don't know that we have maps for exactly where all the uh, disc golf course holes will be going. Um, so I was not made aware of the clearing until they came to me to discuss augmenting the trail. Um, at this point, I believe they've stopped clearing, um, after I was made aware of it. Um, <clears throat> but there was, I think, some back and forth on what to do. Uh, and that's part of why I'm, I'm bringing it to the commission as well. Um, so initially it was going to be an administrative approval, but the clearing began before any kind of application was submitted or permit given. And, and like, I completely understand, like at the town, when we had this stuff at the lake where it's an emergency, like we need to move while the water's low, but yeah, right. I don't think there's any safety issue if we don't have a disc golf course for next week kind of thing. <laughs> You know, I have to wonder, too, if um, maybe they were just weren't, weren't looking at it like, well, they, whether this was going to be approved or not, possibly they wanted to clear that anyway. So not, you know, necessarily to defend them, but, you know, just looking at it from another perspective. So Yeah, I, I had one thought and um, I have I was out there last week. There is so much landscaping construction going on in is that in the area where they could have been inadvertently cleared or is this a totally no. separate area this is this is in the woods mary this is oh they've already done that yeah yeah oh okay they've cut so out trees. towards joshua's yes okay i'm i was not aware of that thank you uh, well here here's the thing it does involve wetlands and we and in Absolutely. particular the agent we are the experts on where the wetland stops and starts based on soils so they should not be working anywhere near they're not to make the judgment of where the wetland starts or stops 
I can. And if they're going to be trafficking through that area where there are wetlands, that that's a problem. Yeah, good point, Tim. Good yeah. point. So could, we're, could we're, we, the, we're could running we, that show. Could we suggest to Isabel that she just have a nice conversation with Mark Walter? We do have a new flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I echo Ian's concern. I mean, this is why we're trying to do it at the lake. And this mm -hmm. is another very valuable part of our town. Well, when it, when it comes down to wetlands, the Wetlands Commission has the final say anywhere in the town. And that's been given to us by the state. That's, that's mm -hmm. what we're here to accomplish. So, uh, the wetlands has the final say on any any work in the wetlands. Well, we'll be able to uh, take a look at everything when we go on a site walk. So we should have more yeah, information. Right. By yeah. And it does sound like, Isabel, they've stopped. It, yes, to my knowledge, yes. uh, they have stopped. And it was also, um, this was before Jason took over the project as well. Um, so I think uh -huh. since he's been brought on board, um that's that's yeah. stopped um but i i do hear your concern fully um and i think that definitely those flow charts in particular are going to be important i think that um you know that's another thing to discuss because i they're not finalized yet and mary you sent me some um updates or we had some discussion about it and i unfortunately i wasn't able to get to it and and make adjustments to the flow charts yet so i think um that's something that can maybe be tabled uh until the next meeting and and we'll make some finalized um final adjustments to that um but i, I think that they're definitely important and i think that um making sure everyone is aware of the process um even though it takes time <laughs> Um, is important okay I, I think that uh there was some confusion or some some eagerness to start um before an application had been submitted <clears throat> just to okay. the, the only other thing i also wanted to mention is uh may may 19th is um we're celebrating 50 years of the Wetlands and Watercourses Act in Connecticut. So wow. it's kind of a milestone wow. for the, wow. this That's month is our, uh, is our anniversary. So kudos Great. to the board members that have been on for that long, possibly, or from wow. the inception. <laughs> oh, boy. That came out horrible, but. Yeah. <laughs> I think I get that. I think I get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. good okay. <laughs> okay, so if we have no further discussion, uh, let's go on to item 10, administrative reports. Uh, Isabel? Yes, so I have a few. Um, I did issue an administrative approval for eight Tunxis Drive for a single family dwelling. Um, the driveway is uh, about, I believe, 50 feet off the top of my head. Um, at the closest point to an intermittent water course um, and a couple of small portions of the house and septic area will be in the Upland Review area as well. Um, mm -hmm. The lot was originally owned, I believe, by Chris Ram and was um, divided and a large portion of it was given to the town um, because the back of it was primarily wetlands. Um, so what, what remains um, was a building lot that uh, originally the, the driveway was going to be, I think, I believe 20 feet from the intermittent water course, and I had them move it back. Um, but that's the only potential impact. Uh, and I think that that's been well mitigated by their engineer. Um, let's see. I also issued an administrative approval for uh, Five July Drive. Um, the applicant, Peter Jop. Uh, oh, I just lost my microphone. Can everyone still hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah, we got okay. you. <laughs> um, 
I issued an administrative approval for Five July Drive um, for the applicant to place a fence along the side of his property uh, within the Upland Review area and uh, do some landscaping. Essentially, he'd like to place a berm um, and swale system along the fence to direct some water that is coming off of his neighbor's property and going into his into the existing um, designated wetlands. Uh, but the work that he's doing doesn't extend as far as the wetlands. It's uh, a good, I believe, 20 feet at least um, from that in the area that he's landscaping. Uh, let's see. I had one more thing. I have an enforcement action as well. Um, that I was just made aware of today at 21 Lake Road. Um, and that will be coming to the commission in the form of an application next month, I believe, uh, because the homeowners put a patio and we had discussed placing a swale uh, alongside their property. Um, but I hadn't received an application and I was informed today that the patio was in place and the swale um, with a pipe is in place as well alongside their property going from the wetlands and towards the swale at the uh, front of the road. It's right on the corner of Lake and uh, Hennequin. Lake and Hennequin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right across from the town beach. Yep. So um, I haven't done anything with it yet, but I will be issuing a notice of violation. Um, and I anticipate that an application will be before you next month. Okay, thank you, Isabella. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, we need a motion to adjourn. I think okay. 10 is the last item I have on my uh, agenda. Is that correct? Looks good. Okay, so do I hear a motion to? I'll make a motion. Okay, second. Second. Okay, Thank all you. in favor. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank hey, you. Good to see everyone. Good Have a good you. weekend. Yes, you too, John. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.